we're making history, let's put it that way. It's our first episode and you're our first guest. I'm and honored. If... I'm highly honored. Thank you so, so much. Good. Uh, um, I know you for the roles you've played across different uh, sectors of the creative industry. The buzzword today is about storytelling. Um, in your world, in our world, advertising. Um, but what's it about our local stories? Uh, what really makes these stories work? Well, I mean, stories are about identity. The story is about how we find out and relate to the world. We use stories to kind of uh, transmit what you might call the, you know, the, 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 the details of, of how we see the world, how we choose to live. And um, for centuries, stories have been how different civilizations uh, nurtured themselves and, and nurtured their young and mm. created communities that were bounded by morality, that were bounded by justice and honor and those you know, really good things that, that we celebrate as being human. Mm. Um, so stories is how we, we, we live as humans. But stories are also about meaning. Um, everything that you believe, everything that you know, um, came through stories. Mm. The great religions all have stories uh, embedded in their narratives uh, simply because that's the only way that they can get us mm. to understand um, both our view of the universe and God's mm. view of the universe. So the defining element about storytelling truly is meaning. We, we find meaning in stories. Mm. Uh, and, and for me, local stories are really about identity because they contain that set of data that, that sort of um, reveals what this group of people, this community, um, what they're about their view of the world, their history, how they see life, Good. and how they choose to live, and the stories that they tell, and hopefully the stories that they embrace, mm. come together to be called culture. Those stories then become redefined in things like fashion, redefined in things like their food. Um, it is expressed in things like their language. Um, what is local? simply means what is a set of stories okay. that make these people's worldview okay. um, understandable. Okay, so in talking about local stories, and you know, if we were to jump to where we are now, uh, we can say that um, our stories have evolved and there's a new appeal mm -hmm. across the continent, beyond the continent and across the diaspora about um, African stories with Nigeria playing a role. What, what's responsible for this resurgence of interest in our stories? Or are we telling better stories? Well, I think for starters, you have to also understand that in a borderless world where the internet and, uh, has, has, made, um, has made communication hmm. easier between communities, um, if communities and, and what they're about are about stories, Obviously, the exchange of stories has become easier. Obviously, even um, knowledge about stories mm. means more knowledge about a people that we did not previously know about. Mm. Of course, we all like new and interesting things. What our stories, African stories, is, 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 uh, are doing is that given the borderless world, African stories are expanding people's... Um, I shall I say it's, 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 it's expanding the world of mm. peoples outside the African experience. If I am a, a European, yeah. I needed National Geographic some 30, 40 years ago to know anything What's going on? about <laughs> yeah, Africa. Right. And what I knew was a direct consequence of what National Geographic told me. Absolutely. Um, in a space where I can get the stories directly from the communities, the curator role 
of a National Geographic has been removed. And what I've discovered is that Africa is not only about monkeys and, and amotekuns, it's also about high rises and PhD holders and thinkers and philosophers and, 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 and innovators yeah. and entrepreneurs. Yeah. And that Africa has cities and Africa, Africans have a, a world view where they also want to succeed. They also want to move their ideas and their thoughts mm. across you know, borders, they'd like an, a direct exchange of stories. Yeah. And that's really what our stories are doing. Uh, the, 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 the new world, technology and, and the internet has empowered stories to be exchanged more directly between communities. Yes. Of course, it's creating more understanding. For us, Nollywood stories became the quick place to go mm. to, 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 to get that access to um, African stories, which is why Nollywood has become much more than storytelling. It's become this platform of identity. It's this capsule where you can, an hour and a half of, of understanding Africa better mm -hmm. because you're understanding it through the drama of its people. Okay. The, the, the dialogue, the language, the stories, the dilemmas, the, the, the different kinds of, um, you know, challenges, uh, does one thing, however way it's produced. And we all admit that, okay, the, the quality is a work in progress. Yeah, but yeah. however way it's produced, the first thing you get is that all stories are first and foremost human stories. Absolutely. There is nothing that... Uh, a, a Swedish man wants in life that um, an Okegbo man like me does not want. I, I also want love. Yep. I also want progress. I also want my children to, you know, to, 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 to be developed and to know a better world than I did. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to take care of my family. Yes. I, I want to live in a community that's peaceful. The very same goals that the man in India has. Yes. And what the exchange of stories are doing is hopefully bringing more understanding to the world. To the world. Mm. And in that, in, in that understanding, something is, is receding. Discrimination is receding. Yes. Fear is receding. Every story is told only out of love. You only tell stories. And, and that quote actually comes from Kadari Ahmed. She came to our, our, our academy mm -hmm. and said to our students that, you know, creativity comes from a place of love. A lack of creativity. Because when you tell, anything you, you, you bring love to expands. Absolutely. And stories are told out of love. And expansive stories become so emotionally connecting that maybe our local stories in a borderless world of technology is spreading more love. So the, the world, world needs more of our stories, absolutely. So let's talk about uh, Nollywood and uh, a world you and I shared at some point, advertising. <laughs> um, where's the connection? I mean, I'm saying this in the context of where things are today. I mean, I once... Um, uh, met a prospect uh, who was from Kenya uh, working for an advertiser here in Nigeria. It's like, oh, by the way, we see all your stories for this particular client of yours in Kenya, and we all love them. And the kind of thing you hear about Nigerian stories and how people love Nigerian stories and all that. So where's the connection between Nollywood and, and advertising? I mean, I am I, one of those people who had a different disposition at the beginning of Nollywood. There was a lot of you know, skepticism in our industry, you know the way we are, about uh, the quality, about these, about that. And I say, well, I may not watch all the films, but I know that at one point we will turn from the doing quantity to doing quality. And that's where we are. And I go to the cinemas, you know, quite regularly, and 60, 70 percent of the films are Nigerian films, you know, which gives me a lot of joy. So can we say the same of advertising, you know, uh, Nollywood advertising in Nigeria? Where are we? Well, I, I think that, you know, drama in advertising is not new. Nollywood did not 
start drama in advertising. I mean, from the a days of, of you know Lintas, yeah. um, drama was part was always part of, of of advertising stories. Why? Because advertising is about people, and and it's and it's about truth. The truth of the brand is found in the truth of its consumer. And one of the things that I've, I've always said that was you know, important to note is that the, the, the biggest breaks of Nigerian brands were built on the backs of of dramatic stories, the story, you know, Bako Super Sak, yeah. you, you know very well how it, you know, it basically spread like wildfire. Um, so what we are doing now in advertising with drama and with Nollywood stars was never new because the people who were also in the Bako Super Sak ads were TV stars in places like Absolutely. Village Ed Master and, and uh, uh, you know. And, and your ATB uh, Tali Number. ATB Tali Number. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing new we're doing. What is new is that we are doing it in an environment where this, uh, we're, we're adding um, brand ownership, where we're now having brand uh, ambassadors. Yeah. And we're bringing several brand ambassadors um, from Nollywood into advertising. But here is what I think is missing. Advertising in other places feeds the film industry. When you're a really good writer in advertising, ultimately... You end up in film. You end up making cinema. I've Why? Always, I've always Be believed in because that. Because you, well. you actually have the, the, the perfect training. The, the, the brevity of storytelling, the capacity to find a theme, the ability to create stories that are aimed at impact, um, the quality... And, and one very important thing, you have always had um, a, a creativity that had responsibility. Yeah. You had to answer to someone. Yeah. And you've always had budgets, Big budgets that you had to be accountable for. Yeah. Now, that's a world of difference from a filmmaker who comes from off the street into a film school, um, has always just worked, he's been his, only, his, his own biggest, um, shall I say, judge and jury. And so just takes a longer time to get to a place where it can connect with an audience in a responsible way. Yeah. So advertising actually ought to be the space where writers, designers, production so, so, so managers... So why is that not happening for me? Because uh, I mean, apart from you and maybe one or two other people, I mean, I have always believed also that people who make the most... You know, impact in filmmaking should come from here. Yeah, Scorsese and uh, a couple of those. Well, they do. They so, are from do. But what, what? Well, again, this 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 conversation we're having is important. I've had this conversation in places, and and when I came to Noah's Ark, yeah. you will remember that I also brought it up. Sure, it's very important for every creative in advertising to have ambition beyond working just in brand stories. Mm. Um, one feeds the other. Yeah. The bigger your world of creativity, the more value you will actually bring to brand storytelling. Mm. One of the things that happens to a creative who does not really expand their world into things like writing books, writing poetry, writing films, writing radio. This is all the stuff that the older writers used to do. I mean, God bless Ted Mokoro. He used to write for Village Master at the same time he was writing for, for Linters. Yeah. Um, and there are many, many of our writers who were exactly like that. The, the, the new age, or shall I say, the new generation yeah. of writers simply need to know that just standing by and desecrating what Nollywood is doing doesn't make what you're doing any better. Absolutely. You, you need to roll up your sleeves and get in there and make it better. And the trick of it is the only kind of creativity that becomes your legacy are the ones that are in that creative world. Mm. I, I can't remember. Because you can't sign off your ad. You anyway. cannot put your name on an ad. <laughs> I, I mean, I cannot count over the course of 13 years how many TV commercials I made. But of course, this, unless I am showing it to you, yeah. only my family know about them, mm -hmm. and maybe the agency yeah. with whom I worked. Yeah. But you can't forget the fact that I 
create a tinsel. Mm. You can't forget Battleground. You can't forget Brethren. You can't forget Giddy Blues. And does that mean I'm no longer doing ads? No, I still make ads. Sure. So I do think it's mm. just understanding how one feeds the other mm. that I think is going to enrich both. Okay. I do believe that advertising is the greatest discipline mm. anyone can have, yeah. um, you know, for entrance into the larger creative uh, ecosystem. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk about your experience. I mean, you've traversed quite an, you know, a wide field, uh, starting from, you know, film school, coming into NTA, you know, doing advertising to agencies, starting a content business for, you know, uh, for, your, for your old agency and all of that and ended up big time doing, you know, production, your own production firm, Tinsel, like you mentioned, Battleground, you know, Brethren and all that. Where does all this come from and what is that one thing that, that drives you, you know, uh, as regards to experience? And I would like you to end it where you are now which is talent development. You know, how do you link all of that? Well, I think what, what I have to say first and foremost is you have to give God glory for the opportunities I have had. And, I, and this I say to people, um, you can be as talented as, as whatever. You need one important thing, opportunity. And, and people give you opportunity. So I, I owe a lot of my journey to many people along the way, um, which feeds why I am doing what I am doing now, which is basically talent development. Uh, and that's the way the world ought to work. But I, I, I went to film school with a vision. Mm. I wanted to be a storyteller. I grew up in a Lagos uh, city where in the 60s and 70s, every community had a cinema somewhere. Yeah. I, I, I grew up watching Indian films. Super I grew cinema, up watching... Uh, <laughs> Super Cinema was directly behind Casino. my primary school. <laughs> yeah. and, and the truth of it is, all we could do then was either play football or, or, watch, watch, or watch film. And it was Indian and Chinese films. And we never really had them in English. They were in those languages. And, and we had to visually understand the story so that we could play act them on the football field. So... Mm. I grew up in this creative milieu, mm. and, and I always wanted to be a storyteller. Story teller. Now, that's why I went to film school. So in coming back to Nigeria, um, the only space I could be was NTA at the time. I'm talking of 1985, 86. Um, there was really no Nollywood. There was no spaces other than the TV stations. And there was just one national network. Were, exactly. <laughs> um, there was no private television. Television, no. Um, but again, I had people there who I met. Um, you know, people like Alaji Mijin Yawa in NTA Kaduna, uh, you know, uh, Bayou Atoebi. Dr. Bayo Adetoebi, who went on to become the DG of National uh, Broadcasting Commission, uh, they were key mentors early on because they focused my attention not on money. They focused on my, they, they defined what success was for me, mm. which is to constantly you know, move the envelope. Yeah. To, to do better today than you did yesterday. To be focused on excellence in that which you say you have a passion. To leave out the noise of the market, you know, um, which I find to be the problem today. Uh, people are more, they are more hardworking at feeding their Instagram handle than finishing a story in a book. Mm. They, they, they are more quick to take a picture mm -hmm. of themselves than to take a picture of the world in which they live. So we really never get to see a story of how they see the world. Mm. Their creativity starts and ends with themselves. It's narcissism of sorts. It is not of sorts. It is narcissism. <laughs> I'm being of, 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 of the most. <laughs> I'm being modest. <laughs> it's narcissism of the most grave kind. Mm. But what narcissism does is it 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 disallows you from seeing the beauty and the and the, and the width and breadth of a world that's mm. amazing, that surrounds you, that is asking for your own interpretation. And I think that's really what an audience is looking for. Yeah. If you're a storyteller, um, audiences get bored very quickly with your story. Mm. 
they start to be interested with your view of the world. The world. Not to your view of you, yeah. your view of the world. And I think the greatest of writers um, take several sources, history, culture, um, um, you know, family, what's happening yeah. in daily news. And, and they resynthesize and they, 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 they reinterpret and they, they make a story for us with an insight on humanity. Yeah that we did not previously have. Absolutely right. And, and that has nothing to do with age. Yeah. It has everything to do with passion and a, a, a hunger for excellence. So, that, so that's your really point of view. Your point of view. Yeah. That's yeah. really yeah. where I, I, I have been lucky and blessed. Yeah. Because even when I left um, um, NTA, I ended up in Linters, where there were mentors like, you know, Ted Mukoro and Ronung Batogu and Chris Dohuje yeah. and, and uh, you know, Delia Detiba and all these incredible giants who, again, not only focused you on excellence, were willing to have the carrot and the stick in the process of this. Mm. And in pursuit of that, when I did then move on to STB McCann, I, you know, I ended up with Sir Steve Omojafor, yeah. who was, you know, as passionate about excellence as you can possibly imagine. So along my journey, my greatest advantage has been I have constantly had leaders and mentors who defined for me what success is. Because success is not the amount of money you make. Success is not how many followers you have on Instagram. Success is not uh, uh, your ability to win an account. Success is after you have won the account. What are, are you doing? It's about outcomes. Mm. It's about a, a new way. It's about innovation, a, a, a new thinking. The ultimate success are those things that you contribute to the world that were not there before. Before then. Absolutely right. Interesting. Thank you so, so, so much. Now, you, you, you know, you, you've, had, you've alluded to, to, I mean, social media and all that. Uh, let's look at the positive side of this. Digital technology. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, make the most of that technology for storytelling? I mean, where's the nexus between storytelling, which has always been part of us, and will always be part of us? And you know, digital, the digital space. The greatest thing that ever happened to the world was 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 this digital um, new media. Uh, the greatest thing that ever happened to the world was devices mm. and, and our ability to be able to be connected. The greatest thing that ever happened to the world is that these platforms allowed all of us allows all of us to every day exchange our stories at the speed of light. The greatest thing that has happened to the world mm. is that nobody can be kept quiet anymore. You can speak up. Yeah. The greatest thing that ever happened to the world is that your story is not localized. It is global. The greatest thing that ever happened to the world is that you can decide to impact the world using these inventions and these technologies. Mm. I always say to people, digital technology, um, new media, social media, everything that is a tool is neutral. Yeah. It can be medicine or poison. You choose. <laughs> you choose. You absolutely yeah. choose. People have used social media in such a way that their lives were exposed and they have died. Yeah. People have used social media in such a way that they have empowered and created new new channels um, where people grew and, and 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 worlds grew. It is how you use it that matters. But let's talk about your own experience in this. Um, I mean, you've been uh, heading the AMVCA mm. three, four times, and even now you're you're mm. the current uh, uh, head jury, uh, head of the jury. Uh, and also, I know you have a segment there, a Nolly stories. I mean, that is mm. all digital. Mm. Have you seen any spike? Have you seen any change in mm. terms of digital technology affecting how yes. we disseminate stories? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Many more. I mean, last year, um, you know, the, the, I think this started a few years ago, but last year it really, really became big. Um, the Lagos Animation Festival. Yeah. I was, I was, I was stunned about 
uh, about the number of entries in animation. Wow. Um, Nii Aki, Aki Molayo uh, also just did a, a film that was essentially... Um, was it Queen Amina? Or what? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are so many of these technology-aided uh, storytelling forms that are in production, that are ongoing. Um, why this is important is that because we don't always have big budgets, we have often been unable to tell some of our folklore stories. Mm. I come from the family of Dio Fagua. Yes, yes. And the truth of the matter who, who, is who some, some of these books, you know, um, Ibolo Dumare, for instance, can, can't easily be created at a low budget. No. The, the kind of characters that were in, that, in, in those stories cannot be, be created in a believable way. Yeah, it's like it's, you're doing Avatar. Thank you. <laughs> but technology gives us a chance to enter that world, to tell those stories in, in ways that are powerful and impactful and believable. And for me, what the digital forms are going to ex um, open up is, is, is a space for traditional stories, our folklore. Um, this is how Africa was built. It was built on stories, but it was built on stories that are not only in this realm. The, the uniqueness of African storytelling is that it crosses the realms. It goes from the, from the physical to the supernatural. It goes, uh, you are, you are, if you're an African, you understand when someone says that a dead relative showed up and, and came into your dream. You take it seriously. Sure. Uh, a white person thinks that they've been thinking about that person too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's two different worlds. For us, what's happening in this world and what is happening in another realm intersect. There's a continuum. It is a continuum. Yeah. And so we are able to be affected by the things we believe to be true. So we don't think that only animals are inside the bush mm. or inside the forest. Mm. We believe there are beings whose place is over there and, and they have their ways in which we must understand. We have deities which we link sometimes to our families and, and, and there are things that those deities teach us and ways to live and, and world view yeah. from where stories come. Yeah. And it is not one community. It is Almost every community in Africa, whether they be in the east, west, north, um, wherever. So the digital capacities that we have now are places where we can tell untold stories. We can look at our, you know, we have a very rich um, literary heritage. We have books and books and books written by incredibly talented people that can become film. And, and, and expand the world of that book and expand the world to that book. So, so, so in that light, I mean, and, and oh, I almost forgot that, the fact that you also sit on the, uh, on the Oscar jury, um, mm -hmm. which is big for us, by the way. Uh, do you see Hollywood or the mm -hmm. world at large, you know, um, tapping into that, this, this rich treasure of African stories, you know, that are absolutely told, you know, absolutely you see collaborations, you see, I mean, well, how do we, again, it might also have to do with positioning as an industry. Are we positioning ourselves well enough to attract that kind of collaboration? Because I think that's where the future is. Lord of the Rings, all of those things you see, they're all from literature. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we go from here? Well, I, I, my, my, I have just one word. The future is here. And, and the world will come to Africa. Why? The world is, is looking for new untold stories. There are all kinds of producers who are looking for stories that would, that would you know, bring something fresh hmm. to global audiences. Those untold stories are here. They're here in Africa. And, and there's so many of them. And, and guess what? Everybody's tired of the normal global narrative of Africa as a place of want and mm. disease and mm. wars and we're done. There's enough films done about that. So yeah. now it's about what is in Africa that we didn't know. Okay. What is going to create that would be collaborations. Uh, 
I don't think that any global story gets done only by people of its locale. I, I, I think what's going to happen is a lot of our books are going to become, are going to be um, optioned by international producers um, and they're going to do those films with the power and the quality and the excellence that will position them um, which would translate into more of it being done yeah. and one day our own people and our own governments and our own um, um, industries will see the world come to one of our stories and maybe then we may begin to respect our stories. We may begin to invest in our stories because right now, a lot of the stories we are telling is a story seeking validity from the West. Mm. We, we are looking for stories that um, other communities will approve of, not consume. Mm. And that's really, for me, the danger is that if we are looking, if you, if you look at um, the trend of the films we are making. We, we have gone from telling stories like Hubert Ogunde did mm -hmm. with Aye that had, you know, um, uh, or Baba Salawe, Moshe yeah. Bolaton, that were essentially... Deep in our, in our, in our yes, nuances. Yes, Ajani Ogun. Yes. Um, they were deep in our cultural nuances. Yes. They were our voice and our worldview. Yeah. We've sort of metamorphosed into looking for stories that even when they are from us, are told from the perspective of someone outside, outside. there because we are basically looking for applause. We're not looking to impact people with stories that, were, that, that they may not know. I, I like that point. And, and I would like to relate that to not just storytelling for the, you know, uh, the world of filmmaking, but also for advertising. There's this big you know, conversation going on um, that perhaps the Western world also sometimes does not really get us. They don't get our story. I mean, I give the example of uh, uh, of the can lions and advertising and people feel like, oh, you know, how come Nigerians or Africans generally don't win, you know, uh, um, uh, the can lions for our stories? Uh, is it that our stories are not good or they don't get our stories? Um, and look at the Oscars. So there's just one slot, you know, uh, for the rest of the world, you know, and that's where Africans put their stories. And I always find that very, uh, uh, not the best in terms of going forward. I mean, I, I think our stories should be such that could compete for any category, as it were, as opposed to fighting for one slot. Interestingly, even in the world of music, the Grammys, Naomi Kambe in today's this day was saying, look, the, Os the Grammys should actually have an Afrobeats, you know, category, uh, because it's a disservice to that genre of music that is only one slot called world music that everybody will have to fight for. These are guys who are touching people around the world. I mean, how do you relate all of that in terms of, uh, you mentioned validation, <laughs> you mentioned, you know, other things. Is it about the validation or is it about the fact that whichever way, should we just carry on being who we are or should we try to tell stories that are appealed enough to them to say, hey, you guys are doing something good? I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> I love the question because um, it brings us to a place uh, that, is, that is interesting in terms of, of the global world order. Africa has always been disadvantaged. We have always been disadvantaged. And, and, and you can say this is because of the color of our skin. You can say this is because of our underdevelopment. You can say it is because of our colonial history. Whatever it is, we have always been victimized. Um, digital technology, the global, uh, you know, the internet, um, give us access to the world not because um, those walls are down. The discrimination is still there, obviously. The disadvantage is still there, obviously. And th these things have come over decades. The Oscars have been going on for decades. Long time. Almost seven decades. Almost now. 70 years yeah. in which there were no films from Africa. Yeah. Now, of course, now there are films from Africa. It's not going to happen overnight because that disadvantage is embedded in the system. 
So how do we overcome that? We overcome that by constantly ensuring that one of us is in the room where decisions are being made. And that's where you are now. And that is, that is <laughs> what has begun to happen. Yeah. If you look at the counts, I mean, you've been to counts. You've, you, you, I mean, these things are beginning to happen. My, my view of it is this. There are two ways. You can begin your own Oscars and hope that the world comes. Or you can join the world simply by not waiting for them to open the door push it back and get in the room. But what will cause us to become part of the conversation is simply excellence. Hmm. We have to up our game. We cannot ask that the game be redesigned for our convenience. What's our own World Cup? No, <laughs> we cannot. And that to me is also a belittling yeah. place to be. Yeah. Yeah. To start asking that the rules be amended for our convenience. I, I don't think so. I think that we have enough here. It's about belief in our own quality, our own excellence. Bonner boy, whether he won or not, sent a message that cannot ever be forgotten at the Grammys. Femi Kuti. Yeah. I sent a message. It's a global brand. Yeah. Shane Kuti yeah. just got nominated. Fella was nominated so many times we stopped counting. At some point, we used to say, how come, you know, Angela Kijo would not be, yeah. would not win. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing with blacks in America. It took Spike Lee over close to 30 years yep. to win an Oscar. The walls break down when we keep banging on it, and we will bang on it with the with two, quality. with quality, with excellence. Um, that's when we ourselves can be fulfilled. Now, when we get in there, nothing stops us from starting our own Oscars. But the respect our own Oscars will have will come from the fact that it is not an inferior version that we created to escape the higher quality of what was globally available previously. Absolutely right. I do believe, going back to our advertising, mm -hmm. I do believe that our advertising leaders need to focus more attention on becoming value providers, not followers. I am serious. I, I owe a lot to advertising. I, I, I spent so many years in it. And I, I was very proud that I was part of brand building yeah. uh, for big brands that, mm -hmm. that I think are, are worthy of mention. And I, I look back with pride that we did some good stuff. But I realized that in those days, when clients wanted to solve a problem, they considered the agency the experts and somehow we found our place ourselves in a place where the client does the first draft of a script mm -hmm. and says to agencies go go and polish it but i mean i think that happens again if the agency is willing to accept it i am when, going yeah, somewhere yeah i know people and agencies who say no okay. who say the reason we are here is because this is what we do. Yeah, we know something. Noah's Ark is one of those. I can say that openly. Everybody would be surprised if I didn't. But the point I'm trying to make is this. The reason you then get invited <laughs> to Cannes and, and to the Lions and mm. all these global conversations is because there is that hunger and that body of work mm. that speaks to an excellence that is deliberate and clients that say, we got something. But it will not be enough that it is one or two or three agencies from a country as big as Nigeria. It would have to be an industry culture. And that today is the biggest emergency of Nigerian advertising. Mm. That those who succeed in planting this foundational 
um, um, you know, uh, understanding mm. or value, creativity, um, are too few. There are too many who are willing to let the client do whatever the client wishes or wants just so that that, that invoice will be signed. And I do understand the place of money to sustain, yeah, uh, you know, but we cannot have that binary conversation where we are focused on money, but we're expecting recognition for excellence. Mm. The two don't work together. Excellence will bring money. Yeah. I am very sure Noazak will confirm that. But it has to be a culture. It cannot, there are agencies that every once in a while fire off something excellent. <laughs> but <laughs> it has to be a consistency, a culture. That's when the industry itself Grow. will grow in such a way that the things that it creates becomes things that the rest of the world look at and say, can we, can we adapt to that? <laughs> mm. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, going forward, I mean, we're about wrapping this up now, but let's talk about, I would like you to talk in brief about talent. I mean, it's one area I'm interested in. Uh, before starting Noazak, before catching this crazy bug of running a business called Noazak, uh, all I wanted to do was run an advertising school, and I still am, you know, beginning to work on that now. Uh, you are doing some wonderful work here, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this talent factory, uh, uh, Mnet Talent Factory. Tell us about your experience here. Tell us about what you do and the future. You know, well, I, today I'm academy director of, uh, for West Africa for the Multi Choice Talent Factory, and it's basically an intervention in the creative industries to sort of empower um, the emerging filmmakers and storytellers with a bunch of tools that they may not get out of school. Um, if you're going to improve the quality of the product, you have to in improve the quality of the producer. If you're going to in improve the films, you have to improve the filmmaker first. And essentially, we've had, in our industry, people telling stories who do not have the grounding, they do not, their worlds are very small. And, and this space is meant to create, um, to, to help them build their world. We, we do, we, we expose them to, to the sciences, we expose them to financing, we expose them to storytelling from everywhere in the world. We make them watch films they might not have seen. All of these are to ensure that they begin to think of storytelling from a place of impact not from a place of individual commercial benefit. And I think it's going to really work because what we're trying to do is ensure that these individuals have enough tools to build institutions, not just build individual acclaim. And if you build the institutions right and the culture is of excellence, uh, they will employ people and create a culture. Mm -hmm. That is what I think is important for every industry to do. Um, advertising especially, is, I really absolutely commend your plans to start uh, an academy. It's, it's critical that we begin to prepare for tomorrow today. Yeah. And, and if what we sell is creative ability, if what we sell is ideas and, and this, this ephemeral things that um, are so powerful and so impactful, um, it's important that the people who are going to be creating these ideas um, have, live in a very large world, yeah. um, have uh, experiences from which they can tap, read books that uh, sort of gives them a sense of, of places where stories have been, mm -hmm. uh, allows them tools with which, uh, you know, they are able to, to create insight and create, um, you know, new thoughts, new ideas, fresh thinking, all of these things um, we can ask of the young, but if we don't actually put in place structures to help them achieve it, we would just simply be hoping and I think also it's about numbers. There are people who are naturally brilliant, geniuses. But how many geniuses come out from your class when you are in school? There's usually a sprinkle. Yeah. But if we systematize knowledge, if we system systematize training in any kind of craft, um, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or business, yeah. you'll find that you increase the numbers. 
There will be people competent at it. Mm -hmm. There will be people excellent at it. Yeah. And then there will be people who are geniuses at it. But the third thing is there will now be what you would call best practices. I was just going to say that you are able to now raise the minimum standard. Best practices. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what I think is afflicted uh, the creative industries in Nigeria, especially um, the storytelling, is that people yeah. tend to think that, you know, if a kid can't, is not smart, can't pass Wayek, they say let him go and be a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's not the way it is today. <laughs> so if you're going to be a filmmaker, you should be a public intellectual, you should be smart, you should be global, you should be a thinker, you should have enough knowledge from different sources, you should read books, you should you should be able a thought, a thought leader. A, a, all right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's when you can then talk to the rest of the world. And that's really what we're trying to do here. We hope that, you know, from this academy, the storytellers that emerge tell stories that, that have impact, that have history, that have um, insight and mm -hmm. sense and more engaging. So, so just what one we see now. sentence, I mean, what's the future? Uh, as regards storytelling, you've talked about talent and all of that and advertising. What's the future uh, for you in terms of how our stories evolve and how we impact the world? Well, I think stories are going to be the next oil. Um, right now, you look at the impact, the, the Price Waterhouse, the figures that Price Waterhouse put together as the totality of the income of the, of the creative industries. You begin to understand what can happen. Uh, it's not just about winning awards. Yeah. We're going to create an, an ecosystem that creates an economy that that you know uh, enriches not just us as an industry, but the country itself. And I think if you're looking for anything that will reposition Nigeria's brand in the world, it will be storytelling. Thank you so much, Femi. It's been wonderful listening Thank you. to you, sharing this with you. Uh, we've come a long way, I do know, but I've learned you know, newer things today, and I do hope our audience uh, at home will also uh, appreciate the fact that uh, you, you've really contributed a lot to our industry. Thank you for having you on our first. Episode. Thank you very, Thank you so very much. much. Thank I'm you. grateful. Thank you. Bye-bye.